Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker. Today what we're going to be doing is putting back together um, this rear brake caliper and taking it apart uh, for the Jixxer. If you didn't see the front caliper brake rebuild I did mention this that I was splitting these out to do them as a separate video because people people kind of asked me when I was speaking to them about this this whole build and they said hey, could you just do that as a separate video if you could because I wasn't going to show the seals and stuff going into this one but now I am. So welcome back that's what we're doing today. Um, I'm also going to just show it breaking, as, breaking it apart. The one thing I don't show uh, in this video is removing the pistons because I had to go to a neighbouring place uh, to use air compressed air. I don't have compressed air here yet um, in order to get the, the pistons out because they were so frozen up. But I do speak about that in the video and how I did it as well. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But other than that, the plan for today is to get these back together, resealed and back on the bike. And if we have time, bled as well. All I've done so far is taken out the two bleed nipples. Not really sure why there's two bleed nipples on the rear brake, but there is. Um, and now we're gonna just crack these bolts. Which actually cracked pretty easily, which is nice. Um, I didn't really buy anything new for the rear brake other than the seals. Because who really cares about rear brakes? So the rear brake isn't getting any nice and shiny new stainless parts other than the bleed nipples because they were pretty cheap so I got them um, but other than that the rear brake is going to be paid about as much attention to as well nothing really like these bolts are going to be cleaned up and used it's not that I don't care about the rear brake I don't want rear brakes out there to think that you know I just don't like them they have their use but I'm just not going to spend big money on it because I don't really care that much it's Sorry rear brakes. And there you go, that's the rear brake split. Um, actually probably should have done that first. Dear Lord. There we go. I'm gonna keep that backing plate because it doesn't look like these are standard. What in the name of heavens? I don't know, can you see how bad that is? There's like, <laughs> the gunkiest of gunk in there. That is, <laughs> it's frozen there. That is disgusting. Obviously the previous owner didn't really care about the rear brake either. <laughs> oh well, sorry rear brake. I'd actually, I'd love to change this rear out for something not this because it's really weird arrangement. Um, I don't know if this is going to work either. Oh, we got it. Okay, so uh, I did it. <laughs> I got I got the pistons out. Um, I didn't record getting them out because I didn't think to, to be honest. And it wasn't in my it wasn't in my shed, so I didn't want to be showing you. I had to go over to um, my dad's shed in order to use compressed air, I do not have compressed air here yet, but to explain what I did, I'm going to just take them apart and then explain. So, what I did was I left them all together, okay, well I put them back together because obviously you saw me split them already, and first what I did was I popped, this one was jammed, right, so this popped out first because obviously the air is going in here, so then I realized that I'd have to get this back in, so I put this one back in, uh, with the use of a drift and a hammer to actually tap it into position because those seals are rotten as we'll see in a second and there's lots of corrosion here so this is going to need a good clean um, so I got this one back in and then I jammed it I just cut a piece of timber and jammed it or wood whatever you want to call it and jammed it up here against the vise uh, to get this one out now you can see this one's even worse so I'm going to reuse these anyway because I don't really care about the back brakes and I'm not spending the money on them um, because I want to get a different back brake for this anyway. I don't even have the right uh, new pads for this because I was sent the wrong ones. So we'll be reusing the pads as well, such is life. Um, but yeah, that's how I got them apart. A couple of bits of trial and error. Um, but once I, I got this one out first time, popped it back in, jammed it with the timber or the wood or whatever you want to call it, popped this one out. And then what I did, uh, because I wasn't putting that back in, is I just got a drift, like a small, something that fitted down through there, and very, very gently tapped it out with a hammer, um, just being really careful not to touch the treads. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So what I'm gonna do now is go over and pop out the seals and show you that. So the dust seals actually came with the pistons, they were so bad. So all I'm gonna try to do is 
Oh, there's so much corrosion in these. There's our main seal out. And there's our other main seal out. And just pop out the little the little seal. Seem to have lost my eight spanner. These are being replaced anyway, so it doesn't really matter if I damage them. Those are the little studs out. Or the bleed nipples. I know people love, love when I say bleed nipples. And that's it. So that's them broken apart. What I'm going to do first is give them a quick clean um, with the Dremel. Uh, quick clean out. And then I'm going to get them all into the ultrasonic bath and just wash all of this stuff uh, before I put it back on the bike and put it back together because that, I don't know, can you see that? But they are absolutely manky. They're so, so, so bad. There you go, uh, rear brakes disassembled. So the one thing I want to show you that I don't know how, how, how good you can see it, but in there, there is actually corrosion um, on this caliper. And it's kind of all the way around, but it does look like the corrosion is mainly in behind where, um, where the main seals are gonna sit. So I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, I'm obviously not delighted either because you know you don't want corrosion like that on your on your brakes but there's not a whole pile I can do so where did I get my seals from I got them again from cmsnl.com that's cmsnl.com and that is what is going into this I didn't get stainless bolts for the rear caliper because it's the rear caliper and I didn't want to I did clean these up with the Dremel as well just cleaned out all the treads and obviously I'm going to put copper grease uh, back onto the treads in and I did also get stainless steel bleed nipples uh, for these calipers. And that's something I'd always recommend, honestly, is using stainless steel uh, bleed nipples because they're just better, aren't they? Stainless steel is just better. So first and foremost, what you want to do is get your main seal. Your main seal is the one that goes into the lower groove. And that's the one that actually seals in all the uh, brake fluid into the caliper. Now I'm just going to try to zoom in on this a bit. So what you want to do is just kind of seat it the whole way around as best you can work slowly and then it'll eventually just kind of fall it's it fall into place itself or it always has for me anyway so just work around and it's near the end there you go and that seal is now in place nicely seated all the way around and that's one done then we have our dust seals. The dust seal is much easier. It just sits in here on the top and dust seal does what it says on the tin. Just tries to keep dust out. And that's that's a lot easier to get in. You literally, that just falls into place. And again, it sits, I don't know how well you can see, there's a little lip up here and it sits just in underneath that lip. And that's it, that's it sat in place. Now, the most important seal that you cannot forget is this one here. So on this little guy here, this is the channel that your brake fluid travels between one side and the other side of your caliper. That seal is really, really critically important and a lot of people don't actually change it or they forget about it. But I'm, I'm asking you, if you're gonna do this job, make sure you get that little guy and seat it well and clean out that seat. Make sure that seat is lovely and clean. And I also cleaned all my mating surfaces here really well, got them nice and smooth so that they could bond uh, nice and flat when I did do it. And just to show you the pistons, so this is these after being cleaned up, like I said earlier. So I did touch these all around with the Dremel and then sandpaper. Um, and I think they look pretty good. There is one that has a few marks on it. I think it's this one here. Yeah, this one, so you can just see a little mark there. But I'm not worried about it because it feels good and flat and it also will only, it'll only, it'll never get near the main seal. This one will only be at the dust seal, so it should hopefully um, be okay. So to get the pistons back in, and this piece is entirely up to yourselves if you want to follow it or not. Um, I know it's a bone of contention with some people, uh, but I will say that I have already done this on the front brakes and bled them and they work fine so a little bit of red rubber grease like a really really small bit of red rubber grease I, all i'm doing is using the smallest amount of red rubber grease all the way around the seals and just trying to keep it to a minimum and just make sure it's rubbed into the actual rubber seals themselves really well you don't want any excess sitting around in there so if you do have excess 
make sure you clean it out. Then you want to just get your piston. I'll try to show you this better. Get your piston and try make sure it goes in straight and just push it. Now, these pistons are definitely tougher to get in than the other side. But there you go, that piston is now home and seated. And the reason I use a red rubber grease is to try make sure that the um, piston doesn't pinch the rubber on the way in and it just it just slides in nicely. And it doesn't, I, I've looked it up, red rubber grease does not interact in a bad way with brake fluid. And even if it did, you'd notice on when you're bleeding it and you get you know liquid back into these for the first time, that is likely when you'd see that. So then just to finish off this side, uh, what we're going to do is pop in that stainless steel bleed nipple. So this particular uh, type of caliper does have a bleed nipple either side. Not entirely sure why, but it does. Tighten that up and we're done. So I'll pop the piston back into this side, get the bleed nipple in, and then I'll show you when we're putting them back together. And again, don't forget that little seal there. Okay, so both sides are now sorted, and what I'm going to do now is put back in this little rubber seat I was talking about over here, very important. We also want to get the two bolts ready, so just get a nice bit of copper grease on there. I like to just have my bolts prepared beforehand with the copper grease so you're not going messing halfway through and you're trying to get the thing back together. So. Next what we want to do is I'm just going to leave the pins in there because it's it's actually helps locate things, okay? Rubber seal is there, your pins are in, and then you just want to let the two go together. Try not to move it around too much on that, that rubber seal up there, that's important. And now what we want to do is just to drop these bolts in loosely enough first, just to use them as locators more than anything else. So now I don't know can you see that, but this side here is isn't pinched together. That's because that's the, a new seal. So that seal I want to tighten down on first a little bit, just to make sure that it's not squeezing out or anything, but it looks good. And then what I did last time as well, is just you just want to alternate between the sides as much as is possible. Don't over tighten one side. So even, you know, give it a turn, give it a turn, give it a turn until you're kind of seated as far as you can with your, your fairly loose tightening and then that's when you want to tighten it properly both sides and once your pins are slidden out what you want to do is put back on your anti-slip plate thingamabob on the back or anti-chatter plate and then put these in position roughly so what I'm going to do is just slide this on like so let's get that first one on and then this clip thing as far as I can tell, um, I can't actually remember, I should probably check the video. But from the marks on the back of it, it should come up from underneath the pins. And hook in over it like that. I'm pretty certain that's how that's supposed to go, because you can see the marks um, on the back here. So now that you, I have all this stuff hooked onto the pins, you just want to get the pins home, like so. Oh god. Then once you have um, your two pins facing so that you can actually have the holes there, you want to slide your retainer in. So now those pins are locked in position. So now what we can do is get this, this guy in place, the last pin thing. There's probably an easier way to do this. I'm probably showing you the worst way to do it, but anyway. And now we have one rebuilt rear brake caliper with old pads, but I am gonna, I have already ordered new ones, so these ones will be swapped out because obviously they're not gonna do the job, they're too old. So now let's get this back on the bike. Okay, so first things first, what you wanna do is get the caliper back onto the rear of the bike, which is fairly straightforward. Just thread your bolts in. And then you want to get this um, rod back on there. And then of course you want to tighten everything up uh, as much as you can. So I'm going to tighten everything up here and then what we're going to do is refit the brake line. 
Okay, so first what we're gonna do is loosely put the reservoir side into place here. This is the top. And again, what you wanna do is copper washer onto your banjo. And this is a banjo bolt. And why it's called a banjo bolt, I have no idea. But what it has is a channel in this side that lets the fluid pump up and then a hole here uh, on either side that lets the fluid pump out into your actual brake line. So that's what a banjo bolt is, I've never explained that before, so apologies about that. Now what we want to do is just feed that through your brake line and another copper washer. Always have a copper washer either side. And then what we're going to do is just work that down and screw it into the back of the reservoir. So the bolt I have up here is a size 12 and you'll probably have noticed that um, that I didn't reuse or that I reused the top bolt and the reason for that is just I think I lost the bolt I got from HEL which is entirely my fault. Uh, it's something that sounds like something I would do so I wouldn't be surprised if I did do that. There's the lovely new HEL bolt stainless steel and what you want to do is make sure you're routing your cable the right way. Uh, I think this one actually is a touch too long so I'll probably have to do something with that and tie it somehow but it'll still it should still work. I don't like how long it is um, but if I bring it around like this it should be a lot better. And there you go. Now I know the way I have that rooted is a bit weird and I am going to cable tie it but I've rooted like that just because this one does seem to be a little bit long so usually I wouldn't leave that loop in it there but uh, it is what it is it's gonna have to do for now so that's what we're dealing with but there you go it's as simple as that so that's the brake back together the brake line on uh, brake line on up here at the reservoir side now what we need to do next is pop off this reservoir uh, make sure it's empty. I think it's actually full of crap, which isn't a big deal. We'll pump it. We'll pump the crap through the brake too, because we're just wasting. We're just wasting brake fluid, really. Um, and how you do that is the same as the front. You just pump, 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 and then crack open your bleeders um, when you're finished. So, yeah, we'll jump onto that next. Okay. So my recommendation at this point is to take this off. Uh, otherwise you're going to find it very hard to fill it. It's, that's just lets you move that out now um, in order to, you know, actually use it functionally. Um, I'm going to see do I have new screws for that there as well. If not, I'm going to get them because they're nasty. But that just allows me now to start bleeding. And I know that I can just pop that out and fill it uh, a lot easier because you don't need to fill You can just fill it to lower and pump that way um, and just keep doing that rather than trying to funnel it in because I don't have a funnel for this. That's that's why I suggest doing it that way. Now what you want to do at this point and always keep an eye on your reservoir level is you want to just start pumping, 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 pumping and then cracking open down here while you have it held in because this is going to take a while, so pump, 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 crack it open. And all you're going to be getting out for the first while is air. Like I said, just keep doing that. Pump, 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 bleed. And basically, I will come back to you when we have some actual movement on this situation. But just always keep an eye on your reservoir level as well. Okay, now today, um, I don't actually have clear lines, so it's going to be hard to show you. Usually what you do is have clear line on here and when you stop seeing bubbles um, you know you're good, right? But what I'm going to just demonstrate is I'm pumping, I'm pumping, I'm pumping. Now you'll also notice this wheel is no longer possible to turn while I have the brake applied and just keep bleeding and you should feel, if there's no air left in the system, you should feel when you open that bleeder you should get plenty of fluid out and your brake pedal should travel down a lot further because that's you're actually releasing the held pressure uh, under your brake fluid. Okay, and that's what I'm getting now. So, like I said, I'm sorry, I do not have a clear line uh, suitable to show you no bubbles, but that's what you need to do and I would advise you to get a clear line. You, To be honest, you, you kind of have to get a clear line and I will get a clear line and check this uh, with it later and maybe it'll end up in the video. I'm not sure but That's all you do is you pump 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 and hold crack open the bleeder 
tighten back up and release your brake. And just keep doing that over and over again until you have full pressure back and just always keep an eye on your brake fluid. And then there is another bleeder exactly like this in behind there, I just can't really show you me bleeding it, but I might be able to show you the actual bleeder. So, I don't know, can you see it back there? I don't wanna hurt my camera. But it's it's just behind um, the brake caliper anyway. It is it is okay to get to. It's definitely more awkward than bleeding this side. Um, if you can get an assistant to do the brake for you, way way easier. And uh, there's my brake fluid level. Just keep it checked. Keep it topped off. Don't let it go too low. Or you're going to let air back into your system, and that's a nightmare. You don't want to do that. I actually probably should have tried to show you this. So what I'm actually doing to check for bubbles is uh, submerging the bleeder line in the fluid. Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna show you this now due to the camera being in the way where my arms need to be. I don't know, are you seeing any bubbles? I don't know if there are any bubbles left. There you go, some bubbles. And that is how I'm actually bleeding uh, this brake because I don't have a clear line is quite simply Attach up whatever line you have, submerge it in the, the brake fluid you're bleeding out, and when you stop seeing bubbles, there's no more air coming. Because bubbles mean air, and you're not gonna get more air in through uh, the brake fluid, so it can only be coming from one place. So that, that's how I'm doing it without the clear line. And if you don't have a clear line, but you have something like this, then you can do that too. Um, so we're done, the back brake is, is feeling good. Uh, it's definitely not perfect yet, but, I think I need to get new brake pads to make it perfect to, to my mind because I, I could adjust here as well for brake feel but I'm not really bothered. And I don't really need the back brakes anyway. Um, don't forget to top up your brake fluid, um, keep it up to max. I've replaced all these bolts as well just because the old ones are rusted and rusty is awful. Everywhere I've been able to I've kind of changed out stuff for nice new new shiny shiny stainless bolts so that's what that's what i've been trying to do and also you know nice new little trick bits but anyway so yes what's next for this bike i want to bring it for a quick spin uh, like i said i'm after the the choke is is not functioning fully so i'll fix that but i can get it started just by kind of pushing the choke out myself so i'll do that bring it for a quick spin see how it feels then we need to do tires um front and back give the chain a quick look over i'm not going to change that yet because i think i think it's okay and that's expensive so hopefully it'll be okay for a while and then we need to put all its clothes back on which are over there and i might put the clothes back on before i take it down the road i'll see i probably won't i'll just put on the seat and that'll do for a quick shot down the road and yeah then we're good to go we're good to get this bad boy back on the road and uh let me know what you think of the name. We're going to call it Jake after Jake Jakeser. So, yeah, there you go. Man who watches the channel a long time. But, yeah, I'm really happy with how everything turned out. You know, I've got lots of nice little stainless bits, stainless bolts everywhere. I like clean bolts. Clean bolts make things look nice. But um, if you watch, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And maybe share the video if you really liked it. That would be, that'd be awesome. Um, special thank you, as always, to my patrons. You're legends. I don't think I need to go into it every time, but you're legends and I appreciate you. Um, if this is your first time here, please do take a look at the rest of my videos. I have over 200 motorbike related videos, um, servicing and just other stuff to do with bikes, so have a look at them. Uh, I would appreciate it. And yeah, so brakes are working, engines working, you know, bikes is, bike is working. It's just a case of uh, getting the tyres sorted and then it's good to go really. We can bring it for a shakedown run, then a proper shakedown run, so... Fingers crossed we get to do that soon. Thank you very much for watching. Adios. And then, outro crew, then we take apart the CB500. Soon. Soon, CB500. Goodbye, outro crew. Goodbye.